And so he brought okay. me in as a, well, the AMD's term was a section manager. And so I was mm -hmm. a section manager in the programmable processes division. Right, okay. responsible for, I thought, bit slice products. But it turns out, nah. -uh. <laughs> it turns out the department had a secret project that was unannounced to the outside world, which was a RISC CPU. Mm. And so they had just finished a round of next generation bit slice parts, and rather than doing another round of it, they decided, for whatever reason, that RISC made more sense as the next thing that their skill set, right? So that the rest of AMD was busy copying Intel instruction sets, right? Right. Whereas this group, the bit slice group, was designing instruction sets, right? Mm. And the RISC CPU would be designing an instruction set as well, right? So that's where it belonged, at least initially. Um, right. And so they brought me in because of my bit slice experience of actually having built stuff. So bit slice in general microcoded processes is not risk at all it's CISC, right mm -hmm. it's you're building right. interpreters that are below that implement the assembler language right right so would would the the bit slice components would they fit into the uh the CISC processors as like a, a target essentially the, for the microcode inside of the larger yeah. system right okay. so pretty much all of these bit slice parts were implementing CISC cpus Okay. Right, so the bit size parts are pretty much inherently not driven by assembler; they're driven by micro assembler code or, or microcode, mm -hmm. right? And so you have, right. you know, a, an instruction that might be sixty-four bits wide or lot or wider that's controlling all these different microcoded chips concurrently. In fact, the machine that we built in Australia had a microcode instruction that was 128 bits wide, right? And so mm. it was it was controlling a lot of stuff concurrently, which is part of what made it fast, right? Right. right? But it was still cycling around an interpreter loop, interpreting an upper-level assembler. Um, right. So, so anyway, I was coming in to work in the risk group, but I'm the guy that, doesn't believe in risk, right? I'm, <laughs> I have immersed myself for at least the last five or six years on CISC type stuff. And mm -hmm. so, and this risk group was built from the bit slice group, which was also of CISC architecture origin. So right. the manager, when he brought me in, said, I want you to spend a few weeks going through all of their documents and analyzing it and tell me if we're heading in the wrong direction, mm. right? Because I'm coming in as a very solid CISC type viewpoint and experience of actually building CISC CPUs. Is this risk thing really better? Right. I, so I worked on it for two weeks went through all the documentation they had, all their estimates of timing, the, the instruction flows, whatever else, and at the end I said, I said to the boss, this is insane, right? It's crazy <laughs> to keep me doing this task. Put me on the risks team. This is the future. Yeah. 